a new data structure that we haven't discussed before. Actually, we'll, we'll talk about two different data structures in this uh, in this episode: uh, stacks and and queues. Uh, so, a stack is a data structure a data structure of ordered items, um, with items being inserted, viewed, and removed at only one end of the data structure of this linear. Uh, linear data structure, and and we call that end the top. Uh, these data structures, these stacks, are also known as last term, last in, first out data structures or LIFO data structures. And uh, if you want to look at some examples of um, of stacks, uh, one of the examples that I think is uh, is kind of funny is the Pez dispenser, is a is a stack. So you take the Pez candy and you push it in, uh, you know, from bottom to top. And when you take uh, the candies out, you only take candies out from one end. Uh, another example is a plate dispenser at a salad bar. So you know, you take these plates, you stick them onto these uh, onto the stack, uh, and then when you take the plates off, they only come off at one end. And then finally, uh, another example would be a spindle of blank CDs. So they get put onto the, sp the spindle, and then when you take them off, you only take the, uh, the CDs off of the top. Uh, obviously, stacks are used quite a bit in computing as well. Um, there's an example in the textbook on balanced parentheses. Uh, you can also use uh, another example, actually, in the text is uh, to use stacks for doing expression evaluation. And then uh, another one that's uh, found in operating systems and in programming languages is this idea of an activation record, uh, which is kind of similar to what you see when you're debugging and you, you get this, uh, uh, this stack trace. Uh, when we look at an example, um, I will show you um, what, the, uh, what the Visual Studio debugger does in the way of uh, using a stack to keep track of all the different activation records for a program. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about the operations that are available for a stack. And I've written this uh, this slide here using sort of the template notation for uh, for C++ um, to uh, to write up all of these um, uh, these signatures for a stack. And uh, these, uh, these particular operations are slightly different than the ones that are found in the textbook, uh, although they are, these are sort of still uh, the standard kinds of operations that you would have with a stack. We will impl implement the ones that are shown here uh, when you do your, your class assignment rather than doing uh, the implementation that's in the text. Uh, I refer you to, you to the text to see how they implemented their stacks. So anyway, these are the these are the operations that we will look at. So the first one is the constructor for creating a new stack. Uh, the second is to check to see whether or not the stack is empty. The third is to look at the top of the stack without actually uh, grabbing the um, the element or without uh, modifying the uh, modifying the stack. The fourth is pop, and this uh, what pop does is it um, it returns the element that's at the top of the stack, and then and removes it from the uh, from the stack. Uh, the uh, the fifth one here is to push, and that's to put a new element onto the stack, and then finally uh, an operation for finding out the size. So let's take a look at these uh, graphically. So the first one, creating a new stack, you just execute it and it creates an empty stack. The second one is check to see whether or not um, the stack is empty. So if I have this thing showing me the, a picture of the stack, uh, if it's uh, empty, then uh, then is empty will return true. If there's something on the stack, then it will return false. The, uh, the peak operation, um, also known as top, uh, will return the top item. So if I've pushed some things onto the stack, um, top will give me, or peak will give me, the thing that's at the very top of the stack. Pop, on the other hand, will return the top item. So if 5 is at the top of the stack, it'll remove it, return it to whoever's calling this, and then it'll, rem and it'll remove it so that the stack will look like the picture here on the right. So if I have 5, 3, and 2 on my stack, when I pop it, 
I will be left with the stack with uh, just elements three and two on it. And then the, um, uh, this, the element five will be returned to the caller. The push operation adds an element to the top of the stack. So if I have a stack that has elements three and two on it, if I push nine, uh, then the state of the stack will look like what is shown here on the right with the nine placed on the stack. And then finally, the size operation will return the number of elements on the stack. So uh, with this stack here, with elements 9, 3, and 2, we should get the value 3 returned. So here is uh, one very simple uh, example application of using a stack, and that would be to reverse a string. So if I have the input tan, so T-A-N, uh, if I wanted to reverse the string so that I get NAT, then what I can do is I can read each character and then push each character onto the stack. Um, so I'd first read T, push T, read A, push A, read N, push N. And then uh, what I would do is after I'm done reading all the characters, I can output, uh, output all of them by popping each one. So I pop N, print N, pop A, print A, pop T print T so that I get net. So that's, uh, that's a very straightforward data structure, this, this, uh, this stack operation. Um, and one of the things that you should think about is how would you implement this data structure using the list data structure that we've seen before. Uh, we will look at that um, as, a, as the exercise for the next class period. Okay, so uh, the next data structure is the queue data structure. Uh, the queue data structure is the first in, first out data structure, so it's also been called FIFO, F-I-F-O. Uh, a queue is the English word for a line at a bank or a grocery store or whatever. Um, so if you're wondering where a queue comes from, that's, uh, that's where it comes from. Uh, so uh, a definition of queue, a queue is a data structure of ordered items such that items can be inserted only at one end, called the rear, and removed only at the other end, called the front. Uh, and the item at the front end of the queue is called the first item. So some of the typical queue methods include uh, NQ, so that's to add something to the queue. DQ, remove something from the queue. Peak will give you will uh, let you see what the front what the front element is on the queue. Is empty tells you whether or not there's something on in the queue, and then size will return the size of the queue. Okay, so let's look at um, this operation. So the NQ adds an object um, at the rear of the queue. So if my queue looks like uh, this with 3 and 2, 2 being at the front of the queue, then if I add a 5, then it'll go to the end of the queue. The DQ is uh, the way that something remo gets um, removed from the list. So uh, DQ will remove and return the object at the front of the queue. So you leave the queue at the front again like you're getting in line uh, and then the elements in the queue move forward. Uh, the size operation will return the size of the queue so if I have my queue with elements 5, 3, 2 in it then the size of that queue is equal to 3. And then finally the is empty operation will tell you whether or not the queue is empty so in this case is empty is equal to false because there are some elements on the queue. Okay, so the last thing, uh, or actually a couple of things that I wanted to uh, mention is that there are a number of different queue variations. Um, we'll discuss these in some later episodes as we look at uh, the queue in a little more depth. Um, so first of all, we have a priority queue. Um, a priority queue is a way for um, sort of servicing different kinds of elements based on priorities. Everything would be put in, into separate queues uh, based on the uh, priority that the element uh, receives for processing. Um, so you could have basically, think of it as having three separate lists or, or multiple lists uh, and people getting put in or elements being put into the list um, based on a priority. One of the examples I like to think of if you've ever been to or if, if you've been to Disneyland recently or Disney World, they have these fast pass lanes. 
So you go to uh, this little ticketing area and you, you put your ticket into a machine and it gives you a fast pass uh, ticket so that you can go into a priority line at a later time in the day. Uh, or if you don't want to do that, you could go into the slower line. But if you come back later uh, and you get into the priority queue or you go into fast the fast, fast pass lane, uh, then you can get service much quicker. Uh, and that kind of scheme is sort of based on a priority queue. So you have two different lines. One of them is the regular line. The other one's a fast pass lane. Uh, and uh, if you've bought yourself or if you've gotten yourself one of these fast pass uh, uh, tickets, you can go into the higher priority queue. Uh, another uh, type of queue is called a circular queue. They mentioned this one in the textbook. A circular queue is a way to implement a queue uh, with an array uh, so that you don't have to continually build large lists. The, the limitation of using a circular queue, though, is that uh, you're limited by the array size that you've uh, actually implemented. So let's take a look, quick look at um, an example of this... Uh, circular queue and I have a Java program that um, will actually do this for us. Let's see if I can bring it up. So here is the circular queue um, example and this thing is written in Java but it's a visualization of a queue. So if I, uh, let's see, I create a new queue and I put something on the queue like this so I can add items to the queue and then uh, when I remove items, they'll come off of, the, off of this end of the queue. So they've gone into this, into this end. I'm adding things into the queue, and they're being added at the end. But then when I remove things, uh, the uh, array element, they're removed from the array, uh, and a pointer basically moves to the next element in the array so that when I remove something, when I dequeue the next time, it'll remove from the second element. So I can continue to do this. Now, what happens is that eventually if I add enough items to this, the, uh, the implementation will wrap around so that the front of the queue will be here, the end of the queue will be here, and eventually when I fill too far up, no, no new items will be put into this. But I can continue to remove things from this list uh, and add things to this list. Uh, so anyway, this is um, this circular queue is just a way to implement queues when you know that you have a finite number of items that will be put into the queue, uh, and then you can implement it with an array, and then just use some um, modulo integer, um, uh, the integer uh, modular arithmetic uh, operators to uh, uh, determine you know when you should wrap and um, and where to place the uh, the element in the queue. So when you have when you know that you're not going to have a lot of elements for your for your queue you can use one of these circular queue implementations to uh, to implement uh, implement a queue all right the other type of queue is a double ended queue you'll see some of these implementations in standard libraries and so forth uh, and a double ended queue basically behaves both like a stack and a queue uh, so you can you can push things on, you can pop things off, or you can do end queues and DQs. queues. Uh, but anyway, I believe that the textbook has an example of double-ended queue in the chapter on, on lists. Okay, so the last thing I want to discuss was um, time complexity for all of the different operations um, for both stack and queue. And actually, I should probably have uh, an element here for size for both stack and queue. Well, let's think about this a second. Uh, as far as just you know, conceptually, how many operations do we think it should take to uh, to do each one of these, uh, uh, or what the big O uh, for each of these operations should be, where where n for uh, for these would be the size of the stack. So um, to check whether or not a stack is empty. Uh, Really all you need to do is check to see whether or not uh, there's anything an, on the top of the stack, right? So if you do a top and the, and the stack is empty or if, it's no, if the element's null, then, then you know that you have no, no elements on the stack. Uh, for peak, uh, that's just looking at the top of the stack. So 
Uh, you don't need to iterate through the entire stack or anything like that. So, so, so that should be a constant time, um, uh, constant time or big O one operation. Uh, and by the way, I think I failed to mention here that is empty is a is an order one or big O one um, operation because you're again you don't need to process the entire list. Pop is also order one, so it's a constant time algorithm. All you need to do is just read the element off the top of the stack and then remove it from the top of the stack. And then finally, pushing an, an item onto the stack uh, for, uh, for a stack is basically also an order one operation. Again, all of this assuming that you're using sort of like a linked list um, implementation for your stack. The uh, queue operations uh, are essentially the same. So checking whether or not the queue is empty, you just need to check to see whether or not there's anything uh, at the front of the stack, or sorry, the front of the queue. Dequeuing is removal of an element from your queue, so you're just, um, you're just looking at the front item and removing it. Uh, same thing with end queuing, so you're adding something to the end of your queue, and so, uh, so adding that thing should just take you uh, a, a constant time operation. Um, it should be order one. And then finally, doing size for both stack and queue, you need to actually count through the entire list or count through the entire uh, data structure and look at each one to, to determine how many elements are there. So doing size for stack and size for queue should be an order in operation. Okay, so that's sort of a brief uh, um, trip through both stacks and queues. Uh, conceptually, I think that they're very easy to pick up. Um, the implementations are also pretty straightforward if you're using like a linked list as your underlying data structure for implementing a stack in a queue. So take a look at the text because it does uh, talk about uh, a, a list operation or a list implementation of stack and queue. Uh, and then in the textbook queue example, I don't believe that there's an array implementation of stack in the textbook. Uh, the implementation in the text for stack is, uh, I believe, is um, uses a vector rather than an array. So anyway, uh, that's something to think about. In, in class, we will uh, have um, some exercises that use as well as implement uh, both stack and queue. Anyway, that concludes uh, this episode.